welcome to split studio talk show i am shalini kumar your co-host today and this is mr bishan kumar editor in chief spirits and let's welcome mr paul roka director general of international organization of wine and wine which is a very prestigious body for wine makers manufacturers so um, my first question to you mr roka ki please describe the objectives and role of oiv and the membership criteria okay it's easy it's an intergovernmental organization so that means that the members are the governments so we have 47 members uh india is a member and france italy spain uh portugal um georgia south uh, in south africa many countries that produce wine but also consumer countries like sweden norway uh i mean we have some countries that are not producing wine but they are very interested there are also some other countries that they do produce grapes or they have large extensions of vineyard such as turkey or this type of countries uh, uzbekistan that are muslim countries but they produce a lot they don't produce wine or very insignificantly but they do produce uh, grapes dried raisins grape must etc so this is the membership criteria and also the objectives the objectives are to service these governments in order to best to make best regulation uh, to give them advice technical and scientific advice in order that they can standardize quality or establish policies on wine production on labeling on any other issue and we do that by hearing very carefully the necessities of the producers and the consumers so our role is very simple to hear the producers and the consumers and to write up proposals for governments so uh, uh, as you say that you advise uh, the wine producers as well as the government for the best practices and creating the standard operating procedures and standardization of wine makings and labels etc what kind of suggestions have you given to indian government because i do not see any kind of standard practice being adopted in india are they being done you please highlight yes. that yes india i don't know the pr- precisely what are the laws that apply for wine but they do apply um the same standards as the oiv for the methods of analysis and for preventing fraud in wine and so this is uh, for sure they they do that i know that india production of wine is not very significant but they the system of appellations of origin for example has not been developed but if the if the government wants to develop uh new ways of uh standardizing wine and they they can go to the um rules of oiv and they it they are it's volunteer i mean it's not compulsory but it's it's made so as to everybody can have more or less the, more more or less the same rules so this doesn't uh we prevent this way to have non tariff barriers you know technical barriers are a problem in trade no mm-hmm. if you ask um if you're producing hammers and your hammer has to be 30 cm but the other uh, country decides that his hammer has to be 35 cm you have a problem because <laughs> and then yeah. that's that's why in wine we have the same thing technical standards for all and this is very important that you have the reference to the oiv 
So that no, not a, a single country can put a problem into exchanges and into commerce, and everybody accepts the rules of OIB for international product for for preventing problems in 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 importing and exporting. So, uh, can you give us some idea how this the ongoing uh, lockdown and pandemic uh, created by COVID nineteen has affected the global wine sector because the production and uh, sales of wines are halted for many months now. Okay, so we have many different aspects and I'll start by the most obvious uh, problems. The coronavirus crisis, first of all, it's more significant in terms of damaging the economies and the and mainly the the coronavirus has produced a lot of deaths and in in where in and this is exactly the same where the wine is mostly consumed so it there is not a parallel it's just a problem that we have Yes. United States is very affected, and this is the biggest consuming market. Yeah. Europe is very affected, and is the biggest con consuming ma market. And thirdly, now that where where it started is China, it's yeah. been it's a, it starts to be an an important market, and initially it was where the problem started, but it's recovering. So. The problem we have is with Europe and with the United States, okay? For the moment, for the moment. Then the lockdown has produced a big problem on sales, on trade. So on-premise is where you buy and drink a bar, a cafe, a hotel. Those places have been locked down, so you have zero sales. That's that's very important because there are many countries that had many markets that this distribution was above 50 percent. And this is the case of the countries where there was a lot of tourism, Italy, Spain, France. There was a lot of tourism and Sorry. Those cafes were full of people coming in summers. And so this channel of distribution has been completely locked down. And the sales through the off trade on prem in the premises where you don't drink and you take home, they have increased significantly in the beginning of the lockdown. And then they have stabilized. And at this moment, they are more or less, maybe they, they, the, the prediction is that it's going to even low, be lower than previous years because the impact of economy and of the capacity of consumers to purchase will be reduced. So the off trade has had a peak and then will go down. So in general, we'll have a problem with consumption in the biggest markets. So right. that's going to be very hard. There is an increase on internet sales or, or in direct sales. You can make them by phone, not necessarily ordered by internet, but you know, internet platforms is what really works. Okay. Correct. So direct sales are, you can call the, the seller and say, okay, can you deliver me two cases? You can mm -hmm. do that. But the most, mo mo most people, what they do is, and this has been a big increase, but the basis was very, very low. The increases mm -hmm. are between 40 and 150 percent. But in oh. some places where the, the base is very small, but there is a, 
So this is good news. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so the difference, I, yeah. I don't know if you're interested in more detail on that. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So the differences between the channels are very significant for the future of the sector. Mm -hmm. um, On-premise normally sells expensive wines. And with a lot of diversity, the choice is very big. A restaurant has a very different wine list from another restaurant because they want to differentiate. Each restaurant wants to be served different wines and match the wines with the food. And this type of thing only happens when you have a very developed uh, way of... Uh, so this is a channel for specialty, for very high priced, and in the, the average price, you, you also have uh, restaurants that serve very easy wines, but you have a big choice, a big choice. This is impossible to offer in the off-premise channel because they are concentrated companies, they want to sell a few lines where shelf mm, life will rotate. They don't want to have things that are standing there for specialized people that even if it's very expensive, they don't want that this bottle sits there for more than 15 days. So it's a very different strategy. And the choice is smaller. It's, it's more reduced in on-premises, in off-premises, and the pressure on price is bigger. Margins are smaller. And normally, big wine companies have more capacity to be on the shelves of the, um, the off-premises channel. And in restaurants, cafes, and things like this, and hotels, you have a very, very large number of suppliers. Correct. So those two things Correct. are going to influence on the sector and on the structure of the offer. Internet sales or e-commerce goes more in the way of selling specialty food, specialty things. The choice is bigger. They don't have to have stock normally, and mm -hmm. they do offer uh, more a wide, a wider uh, um, list, and and they are specializing things. And they and you know that you will be able to find maybe only two bottles of this, or maybe only one, or maybe it, 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 the, the offer is reduced to. 10,000 bottles in that in that product. So, um, you know, as you know, we have a very large range of prices in wine. It's very segmented and it's very interesting. <laughs> so you have to discover it. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is concerning the effect of COVID-19 into the sales. Mm -hmm. Yes. The effect on the structure will be conditioned of will be conditioned in a way by the by the uh, purchases, no, by the by the channels. But it's a very resilient sector. Mm -hmm. uh, producers are very because of this uh, large capacity of of adapting, they they do support long cycles of production, and they can stand not very long crises, but medium term crises. They will integrate. Mm -hmm. They are many of them. They are agricultures. They are farmers. You know how farmers <laughs> can be resilient. So. Yeah, the industry of wine is not mm -hmm. an industry. It's farming. It's very close to farming. 
production of wine is made in the territory, is not made in a factory. Okay. True. Exactly. So that means that they have the spirit of farmers mm -hmm. and they can stand not for a long crisis, but they will be very resilient. And you also have the collective resilience. It's like having a biodiversity. You have many, many different ways of responding to, to natural changes. If you have many species, then you have the biodiversity means response to the to the to the nature. The same thing. Economy may be may be very adverse, but mm. the capacity of some some companies to support it because we have uh, around mm. four hundred thousand, maybe four hundred thousand companies in wine sector. Then okay. we will see that uh, well producers in terms that they produce wine. You see. Mm -hmm. In Spain, you have uh, around 8,000, then in Italy, you have more than 30,000, then in Germany, you have many, and just in Europe, then you have the industry in the no, new world con countries, in the new world economies, is more concentrated. I have to say that uh, Chile has a few companies, but they are also with farming spirit, okay? But they are bigger. Now, um, the other thing of COVID-19, it's that we will have less consumption in general, probably. The, the, in two years, we will have less consumption because of this uh, impact. Uh, probably there will be surpluses, some surplus. Okay. People are very scared of having surplus. Mm -hmm. And so might be that some countries or some blocks like the European Union decide to intervene or to support with uh, measures or uh, economic measures. Mm -hmm. So this is another scenario. And then we have to look at how to harvest and the cost that implicate the harvesting with social distancing. Mm -hmm. We have these people that come to our fields to, to, to harvest and they come from Algeria or from Morocco or from Italy or from, and they first do uh, some, they do some crops, uh, uh, you know, strawberries, and then they go to, depending, and they, and they, those are um, people that go move from, they migrate from one country to another one, from France to Spain, for example. I don't know how it works in other places, but they these uh, they they have to stay in the in the farm. They have to take showers. They have to live there, and so we have to provide for all these conditions that these people that they need to work all together uh, they, that we provide for a secure environment of. Um, of work. Yeah, okay. so that's what actually my qu next question was. So as you said that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the sale of the wine is uh, much lesser than the last year. This year. So my this question is, have, my question have, is the, uh, in the view of this COVID-19 lockdown, do you think there is a need to relook of the OIV's strategic planning for coming years because ground situation is completely changed right now. No, I have to say that the strategic plan of the OIV was had a, view, a vision and the access were in a way we have confirmed the strategic plan because it was all based on sustainability and digitalization. And those things will go even faster with this crisis. Because um, it's difficult to explain, but I'll try. Because this crisis of coronavirus is showing that we have 
global challenges that the that we that a problem started in china and it went all around the globe okay so we all have the same problems and climate change which is the main challenge that we have for wine production it's a global challenge and so the spirits of the people and society will be more convinced that we have to respond to climate change with the same capacities and the same type of decision and thinking that it's also a very dangerous problem for humanity and all our three axes of the six axes of the strategic plan of the OIV are based on securing the sector with different crises, especially with uh, climate change. Now we have coronavirus, but we can integrate this perfectly because sustainability is the capacity to adapt and to respond to this. So, uh, unfortunately, this crisis of coronavirus that it's so awful in terms of human cost has confirmed a need that we have to address real serious issues that touch to humanity and that, and that are before economy. We have to respond before to that. The third, the, the second uh, axis is on digitalization. Digitalization has many things, as you know, e-commerce, uh, blockchain, communications, but we are demonstrating that this crisis would have been much more difficult. Lockdown would have been awful for people with, by not having communications, by not having teleworking. So we need to adapt the sector to digitalization. E-commerce, this is something that is working well, but we have other things like data science, that we need to integrate. And OIV is working on this in in very uh, very narrow collaboration with the member states. Why is it so important? All this political type of objectives for for wine, because this is a sector, this activity, this industry is very fragmented. It's so, we have so many small producers. They are not multinationals. They are companies that depend on the governments. So that's where OIV comes. They need the different policies from the different governments in order to perform. They cannot have a big strategy like a big multinational because they are too small. So that's why we are working with this kind of very political strategies, but they are very necessary for our companies. Perfect. Very necessary because we have to advance. And and I think digitalization is something that it's coming, it, it englobes many things, but data science, let's talk about data science, no? It's the moment of data science. We have had a certain moment where, where wine was, in YV we were having experts on chemistry, on micro, mm, microbiology, on germs that develop in the wine and, and that they produce fermentation, the different yeast. Okay, that was one part. Then we went into genetics, 19, 1960, 19, 1970s. Genetics were very important. The classification of varieties, the True. information to consumers on varieties, they needed a, a very strong support of science. So we went on to that. Then we went into ecology. Ecology was the science predominant in the 90s and the turn of the century as well. Sustainability, climate change, responses, way of planting you know, in an environmental friendly uh, capacities. Ah, that was the thing. And now 
we have data science. We what can we do with that? Correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very very lucidly explained, uh, Mr. Roka. I, we you know we had a meeting with Mr. Uh, Miguel Torres. I think one and a half years back in New Delhi only, where he shared with us that he's championing the cause of climate change yes. uh, all over the world, especially in Spain. So, and uh, he was very concerned about how the climate change is impacting the wine, wine mm -hmm. and wine, especially the grape cultivation at the lower region and the higher region. Do you think that this, uh, the complete lockdown where nothing was moving at all, no human being was on roads, <coughs> no, no motor vehicles, aircrafts are moving at all, has Earth repaired a bit? Has it, will we have some positive impact on climate, this COVID virus kind of a blessing to, to ecology to some extent. Yes, well, Mr. Torres, who's been my president for a, for a, for a per period of time, because I was previously Secretary General of the, of the Spanish Wine Federation, and Miguel Torres has always been very active in this organization and and I have a, a big admiration for him. But um, it is true that was one of the first to call the attention of wine and, and climate change. And this is very easy because the, to understand wine um, production, first of all, it's a matter of companies have been there for a some of them for centuries. Absolutely. They, Many keep, a yeah. they keep a record yeah. of every single harvest. Correct. They have these records. Sometimes yeah. they even have samples. Yeah. They can taste samples yeah. from 1870. Oh, <laughs> that, amazing. <laughs> that's the case of Riscal. Yeah. So you have big chateaus where you have The climate change, they, they feel it, they know, they know that every year, normally they have to advance by two or one day, two, one day, the, the, the day of the harvest of Chardonnay, and then they have to, oh, this year you have more acidity. Okay, let's think. Then they, they take the average of five years. Five years is nothing for them. Okay, mm. because they have such a long story. <laughs> they have <laughs> such a long back. Uh, 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 the cities are very low, so really? they. So I've always said um, that the wine industry has always has been on climate change as the bird uh, that the miners take in the mine. And when the bird is not singing anymore and dies, you have to go out of the mine because it means that you have a problem with the air. There is not enough oxygen. So that was the bird. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cannery. Normally, it was a cannery. Okay, yeah. so wine industry—it's like a alarm. It's mm. like a sensor of the climate mm. change because by harvesting, you have the records, and we we are detecting this. <laughs> and Mr. Torres has been saying that because his experience was this one, but he was representing. Uh, a, f a general feeling of many, many other companies that didn't say much, but he was in a way a spokesman of this sen 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 sensibility, you know, of this uh, preoccupation. So what I'm saying about climate change and the, the, what, has, what are the relations with COVID-19 is that, um, that we have seen that um, that we have been abusing, humanity has been abusing of the earth, has been abusing of the biosphere. We don't take enough consideration of our context. Uh, and we are too many people using too many planes and, and spending too, many, too much energy. <clears throat> and, and going around without any consideration with the resources and we're depleting the resources that 
were produced millions of years ago, and we we are de depleting this in in less than 150 years. So this this <coughs> will have effects. Climate change will have effects. But one of the effects of these global problems is COVID-19. I mean, if we hadn't been traveling so much, if we hadn't been, you know, with this prices on the on the on the uh, of the planes that are below the costs. I mean, you're cheating with these costs of planes that are low price and that uh, the, that they're taking money from one place and making averages. And I mean, consumer cannot have. Um, I mean, the same that you cannot pay a grape grape growers. You cannot keep pay them below cost because they do have to they do have to farm these and produce these with with a lot of work you cannot pay them below the cost okay the same the same is for the consumers you cannot cheat with them with so what is happening is that uh, and and everybody packed in those planes and everybody sneezing and you know this is <laughs> This yeah. is something that we've been abusing of the means that technology yeah. has given to us in terms of energy consumption, in terms of... Uh, and so this is uh, COVID-19, I think it's a first alert. And the same prevails also in terms of solutions. I think we have been um, trying to give responses to to the health of human being, to the before thinking on the economy, and this I think has been good. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Let's. Uh, Shall we can have next question? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to. We. I'm. Yeah. I'm talking too much. <laughs> that is okay. <laughs> so, do you have any consumption data with you? Can you share with us? Wine production and consumption Wine production data. Can, we do and, have all this data. And up till 2019, and you can have them um, all the. Uh, I mean, it's available in OIV. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot we cannot have any data on 2020. 20, yeah. Because uh, we. 2019, we, we, it will be there. To, until 2019, and it's very interesting. Um, to analyze in terms of of a crisis, um, the effect of the crisis of two thousand and eight on sparkling wine. Sparkling wine is very sensible to it's very sensitive uh, because it's mm, there is a part of wine as champagne is a product of luxury product, and then. Uh, you have a graph that explains how the price and the volume offered and, you know, the sparkling wine production matches very well the consumption because it's not like, it's not from a harvest that comes from nature. Sparkling wine you produce more or less what you're going to sell, okay? So, so yeah. you, you can you can look at the data like if it was consumption, and in fact, it matches very well in a long time series. And you see that a crisis that the crisis of 2018 changed completely the offer, introducing prosecco, introducing uh, with a very high level of uh, production in and increasing uh, the capacities in. In Italy and and also Spain and the United States that are increasing by a four percent yearly. So it's interesting to see how this crisis affected the structure of the offer. Um, on still wine, on normal wine, say white and and red and rosé, uh, the this can also be applied uh, with some careful consideration because the the effect on production it's 
it's not so immediate. You cannot uproot your vines if you have ex uh, excess production right away. So the response is is more limited. But uh, but the 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 behavior of the consumer will be more or less the same. So this data in sparkling wine can tell you a lot on the on the what can happen with the with the crisis. It's very interesting also all the sparkling wine data because um, it's a focus study that we made and I think it uh, shows how a specialized product can evolve into a, a creating a consumption demand that didn't exist before. Uh, it's a very, that was called uh, by a professor in economy, Schumpeterism. It means that it's the Schumpeter, you know, the economist that I think yeah. he was a surprise. But uh, that was, at the end, the offer can even create uh, the, the demand. And it's true. And it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at the sparkling wine and it works this way. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's very interesting. Yeah. So well, consumption data, you have them all uh, in, in OIV's uh, source. And now we are in a very stable situation till 2019 but of course this year is going to create big damage into consumption 2020. Mr. Roca can you uh, give us some idea that we know all the major countries which produce wine whether old word or new word is a new new country emerging as a wine producer which has surprised you Oh, these ones coming from this country, which was so far not a wine producer, because you are in touch with everybody. So, which are the new countries you think are are to look out for for good wines being produced there? Yes. Uh, um, well, uh, of course, I cannot privilege any. <laughs> uh, my response will be politically incorrect, probably. <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> um, I was in the last years. I I was very surprised on the behavior of uh, New Zealand okay. because New Zealand came in the market very late in terms of history of wine, and they are offering wine at very high prices. The, mm -hmm. the average price of um, of um, wine is very interesting uh, for the producers and also for the consumers, but because they are ready to pay for for. And then, um, and I was visiting New Zealand recently, and I discovered also that n not everything is Sauvignon Blanc, but yeah. uh, also you have red, magnificent red wines. You know that uh, Pinot Noir is. Maybe I am very surprised of that. So talking about a country, I would say this on, but of course the dimension of New Zealand would be like a region in one of the European countries, you see. So, so it's, it's not comparable to, if you, if you say, well, France, no, no, it's complete a different, a different scale. Because if you right. look at New Zealand, then you would have to compare to region of, I don't know, Côte du Rhône, or, mm -hmm. because each of these countries that have long tradition, they do have um, <clears throat> a mosaic and mm -hmm. a diversity that it's very interesting to discover. So in that sense, and making a parallel, I would go to also some regions of France or some regions in, in Spain or Italy or in Portugal where, where you, you also discover what is new and that has always been there. But uh, mm -hmm. it's like setting the microscope and looking closer to, to very traditional maybe regions as, you know, in Côte d'Iron, Chateau of the Pape, I rediscovered Chateau of the Pape. And I mm -hmm. think it's great. And so, I think the consumer and the advised consumer, like I am, no, uh, the, very, the, the, the one that has some knowledge, 
has always to have this interest and curiosity <clears throat> to discover new things because the universe of wine is not a standard. I Absolutely. Mean, it's not, we are setting standards. Absolutely. But there always a desire quality, to find We're new setting people. standards so that the, yeah. the producers don't cheat to the, in terms of not making bad things and safe production. But yeah, well, I think the discovery of new regions is uh, it's uh, something that any any uh, consumer has to try to to do. One last question, Mr. Roca. Uh, what is your opinion about Indian produced wines? Okay, I have to admit that I don't know them. That the only uh, Indian wine that I tasted was um, produced by a French. So I don't think it counts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, okay. so Rover, it's, uh, it's Rola. something. Michel Roland. Michel Roland, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. The grower's so wine, yeah. I was with Michel Roland a few years ago and he said, this is this wine I produce in India. And it was perfect. It was very good. Yeah. But I know that it's not representative of all the Indian wines. But that tells you that very good wines can be done in India. And I was expecting to come to India uh, precisely this month. And wow. uh, it's now in, in May. And I was taking some days and visiting Delhi and some other places. Uh, because so there I, is a big a big fair or um, a prize, uh, there is a contest on wines, and one of these days, and and we and I said okay, I was invited, and but it, unfortunately, you know, this lockdown has all the plans have been changed. So I was really really interested in meeting uh, the Indian producers and trying to trying to discover also their wines. So we are sure and I we... hope that this is going to happen few, not not too far away, not too far from now. Okay. Yeah, we are hopeful to see you in India now. <laughs> yes. I, let's if I plan this visit again, which it's pending, uh, yeah. we, we need to meet. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Roka. Thank you for sparing time for us and giving us uh, valuable information on uh, OIV and wines and other things. And uh, for, we wish you all the members of OIV all the best and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Roka. And, and do not doubt to ask for the statistics from the uh, yeah. from the from my. Uh, I will send them to you. Sure. And I'm. I was delighted to share this moment with you. Okay. Same here. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you.